Fluke, the company of instruments, reached out to me recently and said, hey, we have something we want you to take a look at. And I was immediately interested because as a kid, 10, 11 years old, I'm working in my dad's automotive repair shop on alternators and starters. It was like my first job. And the one thing I did a lot of was test electrical components and I used a Fluke multimeter. So as a kid using my dad's tools, what do you think I think a multimeter should be? It kind of just you know, imprinted on me because I was young and impressionable. So Fluke said, hey, would you be willing to look at our new FEV150, which is a EV tester for AC chargers? And I immediately said yes, because as somebody who makes chargers, as somebody who tests chargers, um, this thing could definitely come in handy. This guy comes in two configurations. You have one with just the J1772 adapter, and then you have one with the J1772 and a NAX adapter which unfortunately is not the one I have. I just have the one with the J1772 adapter. The back of the box has all the specifications for the EV charging station analyzer and basically tells you everything that it can do. That's pretty much everything in the box. Just this super nice carrying case. Here is the J1772 adapter. So this is just like the plug that goes into your vehicle, but it's the opposite end. So you can plug the connector from the station into this guy and check it out. The other end here will connect to the tester. Speaking of which, you can see this guy is pretty large and part of it is it has all of the different things to do different, uh, different functions, but then you also have a pretty large display. So I'm not reading directions here, but just take this guy. Let's see here, that plugs into the top. And there we go. Okay, what else do we got in here? So there is a front pocket. Uh, there's lots of little things here to put probes and different things like that in. You have the large inner pocket. You got a little side pocket here. Yeah, another side pocket there. So presumably if you had multimeters and things like that, you can put them in different pockets. So I was looking all around for the directions and there's one more pocket on the back here. There's the directions. <laughs> Took me a little while to find that. So you can see there's a safety information booklet and then you have your basic setup instruction guide. It does show you kind of how to set it up preliminarily. And here's a little magnetic strap. This magnetic support is pretty cool. You actually snap your magnets into this little guy. To mount the magnet clip, you run your strap through the loop at the top of the meter. You run it back through the loop up to the top, pull that tight. Yeah, feed your magnets through here and back down. And now we have a nice little magnetized strap for mounting the thing. So now that we have our strap on, let's say we're out and this is a charger, a metal charger. You can just slap the guy on there. It's pretty cool. Then it's secure. You can look at it nicely. You can plug this into your charge cable and go. It does pick up some metal filings. It does not have a stand on the back. So some multimeters will have little stands that flip out. This does not, it's just a cover here for the batteries. So that's something to note. So let's test this thing with my Altel Maxi Charger. I have the cable here. You simply plug this into the coupling on the tester. So the FEV150 has four to five different menu settings here. The first one is called test. And this is really designed for technicians who have to go out and test a whole bunch of stations. They run through a checklist of tests and then they you know, check off things as they go along and make sure everything's behaving properly. Here you can see the number of connection points. It's a single connection point. We have 240 volt service, that's correct. Our max current is 32 amps and no ventilation is required. So this all looks good. We'll save it and let's get going. So you can see the station, you can select this and you can select the PE pretest, which is basically just a grounding test and start. Hold the finger here and hit next and it'll tell you if it passed or not. This one particular one passed. Uh, go to visual inspection. So if you go to visual inspection, it'll ask you if there's visible damage. No, yes, no, no, we're good. It's once again, good, sure, yep, yep, nope. Well, yes, they are. We'll just say yes, no, and we're done. So this is how when a technician is out there checking a unit, they go through these checklists. And the cool thing about that is this station, then they can look back, they can see, oh, this guy passed all the tests. And then we'll go to the connection point. And so let's do some tests here. Now, these are going to be tests of the equipment itself. And the FEV120 is really cool because it runs automated tests of these procedures. So the first one we're gonna do is the GFCI trip test. 
and you'll see uh, it'll do a quick trip and we'll start that. So it's running through the pilot states. It goes A to B. Uh, eventually you'll either relay click, it goes to C. Now it's on C and it'll trip the GFCI. If you look at the device, you can see it did trip the GFCI and we passed that. So we can go back. We got a check mark there, so we passed that. Nominal voltage, just will select, check the voltage on the device. We gotta start it. So once again, this will run through the startup procedure, go state A to state B to state C, which is charging. And you can see it brings back all of the voltages that were reported. Everything looks good. So once again, we get a green check mark. That's great. Next, we're gonna check the control pilot. We'll select that. And this will run through the control pilot. A is just before you have a vehicle connected. B is a vehicle connected. And then C will be a charging state. So you can see it's running through. It's checking the voltages. It's checking the PWM signal. It's checking the duty cycle and how that corresponds to the current and making sure that all those values look okay. So right now it's starting everything up and it passed. It looks good in all the states, A, B, B1, B, B, B2, and C. Uh, if we want some extra details on these, we can hit results. And here you can see the actual detail of the voltages. In particular, you have the high voltage and the low voltage on those. And you can also look at the waveform. So this is pretty cool. You can see the PWM signal. This is the one kilohertz square wave that's telling the vehicle how much current it can draw. Uh, proximity pilot. So this would be the little button on the actual uh, charge connector handle. So we'll select this and we'll hit start. It should start everything up. Now it's telling you a little warning here. Don't hit the button on the connector until you're ready. We'll hit next and then we'll hold the latch button on the charger and push and hold it. And then we'll hit next again. It's just checking the resistors on that switch to make sure that your proximity pilot is telling the vehicle to disconnect properly, which it is. And here you see the ohm reading on those different states. So proximity pilot pass, and then let's just do some of our error tests. So there is a PE error. This is a, uh, uh, an earth ground error. Let's start that. Okay. Let's do the control pilot error E. And that did not pass on this particular unit. And then we'll do the diode test. Okay, once again, we did not pass that test. And then we do the, the error D. I believe this is the vent test. And once again, it failed that as well. So it gives me a little bit pause on this unit. Um, I believe it should be passing these, but you can see how this unit works and how the automated procedure is really great for a technician to kind of walk through the checklist and really say, okay, this thing passes all the tests or this does not. And once you're done, you can kind of go in and review everything and, and see where it fell short. So I love that. It's great. Settings for the device. So the settings here tells you the firmware version, the hardware version, the serial number, uh, screen brightness you can adjust, how long you want the screen to stay on before it shuts off, what the sounds are like, do a factory reset, you can register your product, get the product information, change the language. So pretty standard stuff in the settings. Let's look at the manual control pilot. And this is essentially uh, what you can do is you can simulate different states on your charger. I still have this plugged into the Alltel unit. So it says state A. You can see we're getting 12 volts there, which is perfect if we hit edit we can change our state. So I'm going to go to state B. We will select that and apply it. And now what it's done is it's assumed that a vehicle is connected. You can see that the control pilot's been pulled down to nine volts on the top, and now it's in the PWM signal, the one kilohertz square wave. It's going down to 11.6 on the negative, and that's within tolerance. So everything here is checked out green. And if we go to the next page, you'll be able to see the actual waveform. So it's a super easy way to simulate the vehicle connection states and then exactly what the charger is doing. Uh, I love this feature. This is so much easier than having to get a multimeter out and test different leads and all that sort of thing or put on a scope to look at the waveform like this. We'll look at the GFCI menu and in here you can change the GFCI trip point from six milliamps to 20 milliamps. That's pretty much the only setting in there. And then the final thing is the true test software. We won't get into this because I don't really use the software, but if you have the true test software on your computer, you can actually link this to your account. So that kind of runs through all the features. I can tell this thing is really made for technicians who are out there running through all kinds of tests and they want to automate that procedure and then have a checklist to make sure that they've completed every test they need to. It makes it super handy for doing that. What's left to do is really go test this on some more chargers. And in particular, I wanna see what this does on my charger. Since I have a detachable cable, the first thing I have to do is plug that in. 
So let's set up a new, a new charger. I'm going to skip through the visual test. Let's do the GFCI trip. So just a little bit of what was going on with my charger. I was seeing the bottom of the PWM signal only going down to about minus 10 and a half volts. And while this was okay for my car and it would charge properly, it was not okay for the tolerance of what the tester was testing to. I think you need to be somewhere in that minus 11 and a half range until it's okay. And so what I did is I ended up creating a brand new circuit board, a brand new way of doing my signaling so that we were not getting as much a voltage drop out, well, voltage gain, I guess, out to that signal. Let's just do a GFCI trip test. We'll start that. And this should tell us right off the bat if we fix the problem because the voltage will have to get within tolerance for this guy to even run properly. And you see, we did do a quick trip and it worked, it passed. And then I'm just gonna go down and check out our control pilot. So this will tell us really what our voltages all look like throughout and in all the four states. And this is really the test we wanna to do to see where our voltage is getting to on the negative end now as we're running through the different tests. And you can see right off the bat here, we're at a minus 11.8. So this is excellent. This is right where it needs to be. We've solved the issue with the voltage on the board. And I'm happy to say that, uh, yeah, we're one step closer to having this charger where it needs to be. So that's the FEV 150. Who's this made for? Uh, probably not most people, but if you're a technician out there working on chargers day in and day out, I think this is probably super handy because it has a bunch of things built into it. The checklist, as I said, the way to do automatic testing, the way to manually test things, and then looking at waveforms, voltages, all that stuff on the meter without having to have a second device, super convenient. And then you have convenience features such as the magnetic clip and all that sort of thing to, to really help you out. It is pretty pricey. I'll put a link in the description for you to go check out all of that. So it's probably not for everybody, but if you are in the market for this, I highly recommend you check this out. I think it's a great product. I'm gonna be using it a lot. I'm excited to keep using it. And special thanks to Fluke for sending this along. Well, this is a little bit of a detour. I'll get back to the charger. Be sure to follow and subscribe for reviews like this or especially for the charger work I'm doing. And I will see you guys in the next video.